it was exactly 28 years ago today, May 8, 1985, when 39 year old Ada Herodine disappeared. The devout Catholic and stay at home mother of two boys lived in one of the nicest neighborhoods in Elkhart. It was also the last place she was seen alive. Her remains were discovered in rural Cass County three years later. She'd been murdered. Tonight, WSBT's Kristen Bean is taking a deeper look at this cold case. The hope is maybe you can help solve it. I would describe her as very caring, very well grounded person. For me at the time, she was just my mom. So. Ada Herondine's boys have grown up. She hopes she needs some childhood. The day she disappeared, Jeff was nine, Greg was 18, and away at college. Now, 28 years later, they still don't know who murdered their mom. I think people out there know something. I think there's, there's probably a couple people that have the answers that, that I would like to have. I want some answers, and I want you know whoever did it to, to get what they deserve, in my opinion. The last time Ada Herondine was seen was May 8, 1985. Absolutely for sure she was in the backyard. Investigator Dave Gizzi says witnesses saw Ada in her yard that afternoon, 10 minutes before Jeff's school bus was to drop him off in front of their Elkhart home in upscale East Lake Estates. Was anything found like in the driveway, scuff marks, anything nothing. that indicated a struggle? Absolutely nothing was found here to indicate there was any type of foul play. She just like vanished. I remember coming home that day and uh, she wasn't home and that was very, uh, I remember that being very unusual. Ada's sons say she was a devoted wife and mother. She was quiet and kind. She stayed busy at the YMCA and at her church. And she was always there for her children. So the day she wasn't was cause for concern. The problem, police didn't have much to go on. The only thing strange about the home was there was nothing that was strange. Ada left all her stuff behind and nothing was missing from the home or out of place. But there was one clue. Earlier that day, Ada and her niece heard a noise from inside the house. The niece described the sound as being something strange, just out of the ordinary. So much so that they got up to take a look, but they couldn't find anything. To this day, investigators think that noise was tied to her disappearance. Police got hundreds of tips after she disappeared. Some came from as far away as Las Vegas. Her family, obviously devastated, continued to look. It's hard when you're that age not to hold out hope that, you know, uh, maybe, maybe someday she comes back to you. Right in this location here, down the hill about 20 yards. Later, Ada's remains were found in rural Cass County. Mushroom hunters scouring an area off Birch Road north of US 12 called police when they found bones along a steep hillside. Ada's wedding ring was found among her remains, but police found no clothes or shoes. She'd been beaten to death. Her skull and jaw had been fractured. There was also where she was found a couple of rocks about the size of your fist or a little bit bigger and conceivably the pathologist said that could have been the item used to, to cause the blunt force trauma. Police aren't sure though. They don't know if Ada was killed along that hillside or if her body was dumped there after the murder. Gizzy believes that whoever killed Ada Herondine might have had a connection to that area. Did you find anything? We're still working on that part of it. And even 28 years later, everyone agrees there are people out there that might know something about that connection and what happened to Ada Herondine. What do I want out of it? You know, I think we'd, we'd like maybe the next level of closure if, if that's ever possible. And I don't know if it is or not, but, um, but if we could have it, I think we'd like to know a little more about what happened. I have to believe there's, there's people out there that, that know more information.
this case has been reopened recently. Investigators are taking a fresh look and some evidence is being sent to the Michigan State Crime Lab to be examined again. The hope is, Jen, that new technologies might uncover something that they previously couldn't. Well, that would be great. It would, it would offer a lot of answers and closure for a yeah. lot of people. You know, when all of this happened years ago, there were a lot of, of, of I guess, rumors swirling about what happened. There were a lot of rumors and stories. Some believed actually the mob was involved. Now, police told me they investigated that thoroughly and nothing could be substantiated. Also, a witness told police they saw a large blue car parked outside the house and a man wearing a hat who was talking to Ada. Mm -hmm. Police looked for that man. They were never able to ID that person. If you know anything about this case, call police. I'll put the contact information on my Facebook page as well as on our website. All right. Easy place to find it. Kristen, thanks. And tomorrow, as we continue our cold case series, Kristen looks at the case of Brittany Beers. Brittany was six years old when she went missing from her Sturgis apartment complex in 1997. More than a thousand tips have come into the Sturgis Police Department, but there is still no sign of her. She would be 21 years old now. Tomorrow at 6 o'clock, see what Brittany might look like today and why the case in Cleveland, Ohio, is giving investigators a renewed sense of hope.